Surface your valves, get them O2 clean so they're safe and get them so they're nice and smooth for those valve drills. Hi and welcome to another episode of Now Dive TV. The process is exactly the same for a single tank valve like this one or a twin set valve like these ones. So let me show you how to get going and we'll take it step by step. There are mainly two types of valves in general, or there are much more I guess, but um, the, the ones you see most often in scuba diving is these ones, which basically have an o-ring on that little part that goes into the valve, and, um, and this one, which has a, a little copper ring, which actually um, uses a quite a bit more force when you tighten it up, but I'll show you that in a minute. And that's, those two types are, are the two surface kits you're going to likely encounter when you open up your valves. So the tools you need are as obviously a service kit for your valve, a 19 millimeter spanner, this special valve tool to take the knob uh, off the, the cylinder valve, and maybe a specialized um, uh, tool to remove the valve from your cylinder. A um, little bit of crystal lube or O2 grease, um, that uh, liquid oily substance from Narctep 90 also is a very, very good product for this, um, this type of service. And if you have a ultrasonic cleaner, it's not necessary, but it's really nice to get everything nice and clean. And you'll need some hydrocarbon free soap, so get some from a specialized shop or it's usually an industrial cleaner of some sorts. Usually dive shops have them, but get an, an, an industrial grade uh, cleaner that is O2 compatible, which means it's hydrocarbon free. Step one is disassembly. So first we gotta take the whole thing apart and then we gotta inspect all the pieces and see what gets replaced by the service kit and what gets cleaned and put back together. Here you can see the two different valves. Um, it's hard to tell them apart uh, without opening them up because they appear to look the same. But for those of you living here in Europe, um, a BTS type of valve is usually with the squared off um, top. Um, that takes these service kits where there's an O-ring. Um, the the round ones, which are Dux or Deer Zone or even Halcyon valves, uh, they usually with the rounded uh, head here, they take the, the service kit with the little copper o ring, uh, sorry, copper ring to um, tighten everything in place. On this type of valve, it's exactly the same. You take the knob off with the same tools, but then usually you need a 17 mil spanner to take this one off. And this one is usually a little bit harder to get off because of that copper ring, which I'll show you in a second. Here you can see that copper ring, and that usually takes a little bit of fiddling to get underneath and this kind of o-ring pick is good for the job because you can just get underneath it and pry it out. Now this copper ring is a one use only item and that's why it's also in the surface kit. But in comparison to the other one, this, this part is not in the surface kit. So you need to clean this in the same way as you do the valve in a minute. Before we get started, you obviously need to get your valve off your cylinder. Now, the best tool for doing this is, is one of these tools. It's, it's basically a, uh, a, a metal rod with thread on the end, a thin thread on the end, and you just screw this in, and then with the tap of your hand or with a hammer, it should come off nice and easy. Um, there should not be any force required when you take the valve off of your um, cylinder. Um, the same with installing. I don't even use this rod for installing it. It's just screwed on by hand force and with a slight tab, uh, a slight tab on the valve, that's it. I mean, you don't need to over tighten these things, but we'll get more into detail about that when we do the reassembly part of this video. So now that you have your valve off, we have to take out the old parts 
So we start by taking off the O-ring. This one is reasonably okay, but uh, I mean they they are coming in the surface kit, so we'll change them anyhow. But um, usually some uh, sometimes these get really squished, especially if you have one of these cylinders that have a, uh, a tapered opening, then they get completely flat and they're unusable after one go. So this one gets discarded, so we have a new one, a fresh one here in the surface kit. Now we need to take off the knob. Um, for that, we use our little special knob tool, pun intended. And inside the valve, as you can see there, these two little teeth, they fit right over the bolt there. And then when you hold, hold on to the knob, you can just unscrew this. And you get your little retainer nut, this one, and a little spring. Put these to the side. Then sometimes there is a little washer on this side as well, but if you take the knob off, then the washer is here. A little see-through washer. Keep that because it's not in the surface kit. Keep these as well because they're not in the surface kit either. Now, here you can see this is why we need the 19 millimeter wrench. The 19 millimeter wrench will fit right over, there it was, right over this. It's impo impossible almost to do this by hand, so the best thing is to screw this one back into the cylinder and then just unscrew it that way. So all you can do is you screw the valve in to the tank, it doesn't have to be all the way down, and then you can easily remove the inside. As you can see, that's quite tough in there. And now we can just by hand unscrew the whole um, in insides. So now that we have loosened it up, we can unscrew the parts and take them apart. It's a, it's a good tip. You can use this tool to take the inside, the little um, screwy thingy out. It's actually the seat that makes sure that your tank um, remains tight when you close it. Now, for those of you who don't know, look inside there, you can see that little, tiny little uh, metal orifice there. Let's see, there. That is the high pressure seat to which this little nylon bushing goes up against. So you can see there's thread in there and a little flat bit here. That flat bit gets pushed. Here you can see the old one. See that fork grabs onto this flat bit here and then when you turn the knob uh, your this one gets pushed in and when you turn the other way around close it, uh, open it up it gets pulled back so when we go to reassemble this valve again, it's a key point to lubricate these threads very, very well because they'll make your, nice, make your valves go nice and smooth. Right. Now, we need to take away the dipstick or snorkel or, you know, whatever your name, you know, whatever the name is. What this does is basically prevents if you have debris or even water in your tank, and it runs down when your tank is upside down, it doesn't clog the valve or come in your regulator. So this is a, bit of, a little snorkel, if you like. So if there's debris or things, things inside the tank, it won't fall in. So we need to take this off because we want to get nice and inside when we do the cleaning with the brush. Sometimes when you hear tanks and you hear something rattling inside, it's usually this one that came loose this to the side. Right now our valve is completely disassembled and there's no more moving parts inside. Step two is the pre-cleaner. Basically you get rid of all the old grease and all the you know junk and gunk you can see with your naked eye. What I use for cleaning is uh, this GMC stuff. This is uh, the special cleaner that you also used for tanks. This is going to be good for the, the pre-clean 
And then afterwards to make it oxygen safe, I have this OxySafe Citric Tank Cleaner, but it also does a good job of cleaning out uh, residual hydrocarbons. So it's very concentrated stuff. So a little squeeze in some warm, lukewarm water does the trick. At a benefit, it smells really nice. And then we go about with the general pre-clean. So what I'm looking for is, is basically, let's get this GoPro out of the way, let's basically, you know, all the, you know, old lubrication you can see, or, you know, um, maybe uh, some residue of an O-ring. Sometimes these O-ring, O-rings, they, they, they dry out, uh, especially in higher oxygen uh, rich environments and you want to get all those all that crap out so especially the thread get that nice and clean when I brush this I always brush it as if I'm screwing this this toothbrush out because that way all the debris comes out through the thread so you just clean it a couple of times this way and then the final part you just on the force of the brushes going through the thread, you let the brush come out of the hole. This is the best way to get rid of all that stuff, otherwise it's almost a nightmare to get out. Same as there. You can get one of these small, almost like a pipe cleaner, if there's any hunters out there, you probably have a whole bunch of them laying around. Just don't use the ones you're using on your gun, because they're full of the lubrication that you don't want. So buy a new set and use it only for your valves. We go, we go. And now for the part where we go a little bit more in depth and we'll take it into the ultrasonic cleaner and that'll get right into all the nooks and crannies inside this little valve. Step three is now the O2 cleaning, which basically is the same thing as the pre-cleaning, just one more time with the hydrocarbon free soap and in much more detail. Here is our little um, ultrasonic cleaner. These things are very cheap so you can easily invest in one yourself. Um, I have made a little lukewarm water with that uh, cleaning substance. Make sure all the parts are under the water and I'll turn it on. It makes a hell of a noise. So when we want to rinse it, we take our container, clean it out, rinse that first, and then just get some new fresh lukewarm water without anything in it. Make sure you've washed your hands and we go about some rinsing this out so we don't have any residual cleaning agent left. There we go. And now we got to dry everything off, give it a wipe down, and then we have to give it a good blast with some dry air. The best tool for that job is one of these air guns um, connected to a, a regulator, and then you can just clean this out, it makes a hell of a noise. But it dries it out really, really good. A little side note on the pre-clean, um, usually it's not necessary if you do this once a year, it, it is not necessary. But sometimes older valves, they accumulate quite a bit of calcium here. A good way of getting rid of that is by using a little bit of um, um, like uh, citric acid. Um, uh, it's um, like vinegar, you can get rid of all that calcium buildup. Uh, you do that prior. Uh, in as a part of the pre-cleaning stage. So now the valve is clean and nice and dry. We can reassemble. Now let's start with this uh, little snorkel. Screw it in by hand and give it a little. Don't go overboard. Just a little, little bit with a with a wrench so that it doesn't come loose inside your tank. Now for the internal parts. And this is where the little tip comes. We have to lubricate 
these threads here because that makes it a hell of a lot easier to, for you to turn your valves when you uh, especially when there's pressure on them so you give the thread a tiny little bit of O2 compatible grease and you just turn this in by hand all the way to the bottom The inside of the valve, it looks like this, that's that little fork, then you have an o-ring, uh, a, a plastic washer, and then a plastic washer again, um, and then the o-ring here that keeps everything nice and tidy. If you push these together, this is going to turn inside that bushing, so this one also needs a little bit of lubrication. Now line up the fork with that. Uh, seat and as you can see now I can push this all the way down and then you by finger tight you can just screw this all the way in now it's very important that you can screw it that you're able to screw it in all the way with your fingers because and there's still a bit of play here in this part because if by chance you haven't tightened let's say if you've done this so now basically the valve is open right on the inside that little valve uh, seat the, the nylon seat is open so if I go to turn this by hand eventually it'll get resistance right there you can see there's a gap here if I just force it with a wrench or something I'm gonna ruin everything inside so I need to be a I need to really you can use the knob for that as well really close the valve if you like and then I, I'm able with fingers just to close this off completely put the wrench on for the final part take the right one number 19 and again we can put it on the tank to just tighten it up just a little bit don't go overboard just a little bit two seconds and now for the knob I always give this little washer also a tiny dab of uh, lubrication it just makes it a little bit more water repellent and it makes it turn nice and easy when the knob is in place then you put the knob in place then the spring and then that little retainer we take our special tool we just push and turn at the same time we're pushing against the springs force and we're turning at the same time until it catches and then you can just keep on going you can eventually see that little tap coming out there you go and just give it just tighten it up don't not too tight just a little bit there we go and then you can test Ooh, nice and that's the way a valve should go right nice and smooth there we go now all we need to do is put the o-ring back into place and this valve is good to go now when we go to reassemble the tank uh, the valve onto the tank uh, this tank is obviously already clean there is um, a good point to be made there should be no grease on this o-ring this is a static o-ring so it means it doesn't move it doesn't need any lubrication plus it's completely um, sealed inside here so it's not exposed to anything either so no lubrication clean in and we thread it in all the way to the bottom and then like I mentioned a little tap is all you need to be able to um, make sure this is inside if you have one of these tools you can screw this in but usually a tap like that it's more than enough so I hope you've liked this video on how to service and auto clean your own valves um, remember to like and share this video if you have any comments please leave them in the section down below I'll see you out there